Way brother that you Oh my brother you are going through times of difficulty I know sometimes you feel all alone Call me anytime when you feel all the way down oh, 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 oh. Trials and temptations lie at every corner we turn It's a test from Allah to see if we succeed or not السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين In the name of Allah the compassionate and the merciful all praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad his family and his followers all until the day of resurrection Let me welcome you to this new episode of Meet Your Advisor on Huda TV Of course we are meeting every Friday by the grace of Allah at 9 p.m. Mecca time. And of course, our lines are opened for you to ask any inquiry or question on your mind, any doubt, anything that you'd like to share with us. We're so happy to be together for one hour long until 10 p.m. by the grace of Allah, inshallah. Now, I do have a topic today I'd like to uh, address, and uh, it is important for us, I think, to be very grateful for all the bounties and good things favors upon us by Allah the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala but also on the other hand we would like to be patient when we are uh, struck by a calamity by uh, some difficulties as you can see the world is full of turbulence but at the same time full of opportunities and good things there are so many good things in life that we need to be optimistic about and thankful for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously, who has given us life, has given us uh, the opportunity to breathe, to eat and drink, and to move uh, the, f the freedom of choice, the freedom of moving around from one place to another, also to hear and to be able to mix with people and to have our opportunity in life. But also, at the same time, there are challenges, there are difficulties in life. And that's how the Prophet wasallam gave us a great advice in this respect. When he said in his hadith, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٍ وليس ذلك لأحد إلا للمؤمن إن أصابته سراء شكر فكان خيرا له وإن أصابته ضراء صبر فكان خيرا له Very interesting It is a wonder for a believer indeed that all of his matter all of his situation in life is indeed good for him whenever he is given a bounty he is thankful and then that is good for him and when he is struck by a calamity or something disliked something that he would not be happy about then he becomes patient and that is good for him and this is not for anyone but to the but for the believer obviously this would apply to both the men and the women, young or old, it doesn't matter. What a person needs to do is to always be thankful. And this is part of our belief in predestination, in things that we know are given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know what is hidden for us in the moral. We don't know what awaits us tomorrow, after tomorrow, a month from now, a year, two years, and so on. But if you are happy with what you have, but also you struggle and pay attention to things you need to pay, to pay attention to. Obviously, if you do your duties, if you are complacent and have tranquility 
inside you, because you have strong Iman inside you, then obviously you'd be so much happy in life. Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمُ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Those who believe, meaning firmly and purely believe in Allah and have not mixed their strong and pure belief in Allah with injustice, and that is an indication of the belief in uh, or having any sort of shirk or polytheism or association with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously they will be having security. For them is security, meaning in this life as well as in the year after. They are being guided. So this is very, very significant for everyone not to mix their pure iman with any sort of shirk, but fully depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. That's what we need to concentrate on and, and be thankful when it is time for happiness or something that we have been given to be thankful, to praise Allah for it. But also, on the other hand, if for some reason we are being uh, struck by something, we have something that we don't find uh, pleasant, for example, we shall be very, very also patient. But also we thank Allah because a, a Muslim says, Alhamdulillah, whether he's given good or given something else. No matter what you have, you're always happy with Allah's decision for you, Allah's destination for you, Allah's destiny, something that Allah has given you. And of course, you should be happy with it. That's how we can make life so meaningful to us. We can enjoy it all the time. Let me, for example, go and, and check on some of the emails that I uh, had earlier. And this is from some of the uh, people here. Uh, and of course, we have our email, as you, as you can see, meet your advisor at huda.tv. That is our address there, and it will come to us directly. This is something that I... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for the sister, actually, who wrote me this very interesting email, which has three points. If I would say the name, because she didn't ask me not to tell her name. Her name is Sister Fatima Zahra, Fatima to Zahra. And she says, first, she's a Muslim who lives abroad, meaning outside a Muslim country. And she has a sister also who is not a Muslim. And yet, this sister who is not a Muslim is in contact with her and she feels she is uh, happy with her and uh, we communicate via internet, as she says. She, see, she feels she can relate um, to me, her feelings, more than others who, whom she can't uh, open up too much. So she requests my practicing Islam, or she respects my practicing Islam, though she doesn't, um, she doesn't choose Islam as her own way. She does not like advice. If anyone hints on giving her advice, even if it be recommendation or recommended nicely, for her to think about doing something in a way she hadn't thought of, she becomes immediately defensive and distant. And she says, what should I do in this respect? Should I go with her? Should I push uh, towards her to get some interest in Islam? Or should I back up and, and stay away from this? Well, first, alhamdulillah that you are doing so wonderful in your act 
uh, uh, action or being active in da'wah. This is something great and we are so happy and may Allah give you all the support and guidance in this regard. Secondly, obviously we would find difficulties here and there. We would find that some people may not like what we do and they don't like the advice. But we need to come and, and since she likes to talk to you, she likes she, she, she wants and from time to time to relate to you some of the feelings that she has and she likes you to share with that. Of course, you can always talk to her about that. You can send her a book. You can always ask her about this. You can always tell her about yourself. Don't talk about her, but rather say, say, mashallah, um, you know, uh, I, I saw, or maybe someone else, if you'd like, if you don't like to talk about yourself, as probably she thinks that you are boasting about yourself or you are uh, so much uh, being, you know, arrogant and so on. Uh, if you say, well, I've done this, this, and I found it to be very, very good for me, and so on and so forth. But you can always quote and talk about cases where people do enjoy their life. Uh, people who are there to talk about, you know, uh, successful stories, enjoyment of life, thinking about the future, raising questions about the purpose for our creation, talking about, you know, how people do think about their only this life, and they don't think about the hereafter. Obviously, if you create that interest, you'd be successful. And this of course, would, would come over time. And I think you'll have a skill in doing so. So it, takes, it does take time, but at the end, you'll be, inshallah, successful. I'm sure that you'll, uh, you'll enjoy that so much. And, uh, and I'm glad that this thing will, will, will happen. And also, don't forget to make dua for her. Because if you make dua for her, Allah is there to open her heart. Allah is there to answer your supplication in prayer. So it is important for us to keep on doing this, to uh, indulge in this, and to struggle. Because you never know when the moment comes. If Allah wants guidance for her, He will guide her. He will open her heart. فَمَا يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ whom Allah wants to guide, will open up his or her chest for Islam. And if Allah doesn't want her to be guided, of course, the doors will be closed. However, you are being rewarded every time you do this kind of work. Every time you're doing some effort is going to be recorded for you, inshallah, and it will be there for you awaiting you on the day of judgment as a reward. And Allah will guide you. Allah will incre increase all the bounties on you because of this work that you're doing. And remember, nothing better than the work of inviting people to the truth. Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who's better in saying than the one who calls upon the way of Allah. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا and does righteousness. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ and says, I am from among the Muslims. So if you do this, obviously you are following the path of the Prophet wasallam. You're actually on the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know, as, as you know, he was not only uh, rejected or his call was rejected, but he was even persecuted. He was even turned down and he had to go and, and flee Mecca to Medina. Even when he went to Taif, as you remember, in the, in the biography and seerah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he went to Taif and he found it so difficult. In fact, when he went to Thaqif, that tribe in Taif, he went there, he told them about Islam. So obviously they didn't even listen to him. They didn't respond positively. They didn't even 
give him anything and say, well, thank you, yes, all right. Uh, at least they give him a gift or something or they, they treat him nicely. They never did any of that. But what they did is they asked their own children to hit him with stones, to drive him away from that town. And he went so feeling, you know, uh, disappointed. And he went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said what he said, the very famous uh, statement where he said, If you are not angry with me or you have no wrath on me, then I do not care. It is you that I'm serving. So I did what I was supposed to do and O oh Allah, be pleased with me. That is the point. Even he, when he was rejected. But look, Allah gave him some good consolation and then Adas, that servant who saw him and he, you know, when he was resting under uh, uh, a tree after walking and, and finding it difficult to convince the tribe of Thaqif at that time. And then what he gave him, he gave him this, you know, uh, grapes. He gave him grapes and he, and he looked at him at the back and he saw the seal of prophethood on his back and he started a nice conversation with him. And finally, Adas believed in the Prophet, peace be upon him, accepted Islam right there. And he saw that he learned that there will be a Prophet coming and who has a ceiling on his back. And that's what happened. So my point in this regard is, is go ahead and, and do your own work. Don't worry about not being accepted and uh, make dua for your sister. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide her heart. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide her heart, to open her mind uh, to the truth by His own grace subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is, that is my, um, my advice to you. Also, the second point is talking about your father, whom you said uh, is, uh, is a Muslim. However, he holds many beliefs which are contrary to Islam. Very, very interesting. I know that uh, there are many who say their, their names are Muslims, but yet they don't follow Islam rightly. They don't follow Islam as they should. And that's, that's, that's a prob problematic. I think I do have to uh, stop here for a break, but I'll be back with this very interesting story of that father and what he did um, and what kind of beliefs he had and what you need to do with him in this regard. I'll be back with more. So please, stay tuned. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Do you like to have yourself purified, your children obedient to you? Do you like your dua to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is obligatory for every Muslim and Muslimah to pay the nasiha immediately. That's why the Messenger وسلم, when he saw something wrong, he did not delay it. He issued that immediately. He turned his face to the Prophet and to the people and said, I swear by Allah that I have never ever seen a better educator or instructor than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you are the fourth person in the middle of the cave with those three people, you think that they will see the rays of the sun again? So the fruit of sincerity is that it had an impact on the people, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has a prompt result or effect on the man who is doing it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us and purify our hearts and our deeds.
In your standpoint of view, are there specific or certain criteria to choose your spouse or a partner to marry or not to marry? Maybe that's the question. Do we revise the quality of performance of our treatment between the family members as fathers or mothers? As they say usually, it's not what you say, it's how would you say it. Wouldn't you like to be a good storyteller for your kids? Neurobiologically speaking, child abuse and emotional trauma causes scars in the brain of the child and this might be not easily healing. What's the exact job description of a father? Is it closing payments and feeding or other important things? Well, I think the job description of a father is merely giving him love and care, self-confidence, giving him sense of security, and checking for the points of strength to strengthen them. What about potty training and its planning? Oh yeah, actually, it's a state, it's a condition. Fatherhood is not a body or a person, it's a state. Are you a good or skillful designer for the policy and the long-term plans of your, the life of your kids? Join us every Wednesday for Family Issues. I heard it through a brother that you Oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Thank you so much for staying with us on Meet Your Advisor here on Huda TV and of course uh, before the break I was going to tell you about this interesting uh, question about the father who says he's a Muslim yet he has certain things that are contrary to Islam for example he doesn't believe in the Sunnah of the Prophet peace be upon him and he uh, only believes in the Quran and he says about uh, for example Al-Imam Al-Bukhari that he wrote his book uh, based on politics rather than you know the uh, sincerity in writing the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only from a scientific uh, you know perspective very interesting to, to hear this because this is contrary to the truth there is nothing further to truth than this uh, for, further from, from truth because Al-Imam Al-Bukhari if you read the authentic sources regarding how Al-Imam Al-Bukhari Rahimahullah wrote his book you would be wondered or wondering how in fact Al-Imam Al-Bukhari Rahimahullah how he wrote this book and he was very keen in writing uh, this in collecting the hadith and verifying that this hadith was reported by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam used if he would know that there is a hadith uh, with someone who lives far away many thousands of miles away from where he stays he would go and travel to find that hadith and to make sure that it was included in his hadith based on the criteria that he had developed which are very very um, you know crucial in that matter for example as he uh, was collecting hadith and he uh, sat with a, with a good Muslim mashallah but that Muslim had uh, an animal and wanted this animal to come so he showed this animal as if he had some food for the for the animal in order to come closer and he was calling that animal to come over. Of course, when, when the animal approached him and, and was close, found nothing because he wanted to catch him and wanted to, um, to ride or, and move and so on. That showed Al-Imam Al-Bukhari that if, he, if this man lied to the animal, he could have lied to the Prophet wasallam. So he left that hadith and did not include it because he was very, very uh, strict in applying the criteria that he had developed for accepting hadith. Now, we come to someone who is, in fact, accusing Al-Imam Al-Bukhari and Al-Imam Muslim, for example, may Allah have mercy on, on their souls for their methodology, for example, all that they were influenced by politics and so on. This is, this is in fact, a, a, a terrible judgment, baseless judgment, and, of course, it was something that 
he probably heard. You said he holds a PhD and, and so on, and he doesn't want to listen to people and so on. But in fact, if this, if this person wants to be sincere and, and wants to find the truth, he should search for that truth and, and go and, and find that, alhamdulillah, that the most you know, uh, truthful book and authentic book after the glorious Quran in Islam is Al-Imam Al-Bukhari's book. This is by the agreement of all the scholars of Islam throughout the ages from the time of the, when he wrote his own book and collection of hadith until today. In fact, only those who had some doubt or wanted to attack Islam and the foundation of Islam based on the sunnah, they, they go and, and, and direct some attacks against Al-Imam al-Bukhari, Al-Imam Muslim, the methodology of the hadith, and even against, uh, for example, those who uh, reported many of the hadith such as uh, 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 the Sahabi Abu Huraira, Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr, uh, radiallahu an, may Allah be pleased with him, and, and others, only just to attack Islam from that, and yet they have not been successful by the grace of Allah. Al Bukhari and Muslim and uh, Abu Dawood, Muatta uh, uh, by Al Imam Malik, At Tirmidhi, uh, Ibn Majah, all of these books have been accepted fully by the majority of the Muslims throughout the ages. And alhamdulillah, there's still great sources to turn to to find the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And for, for that point, my, my suggestion, all right, do I have a caller? Abu Khalid, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. How are you, Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Wassalam. First of all, I'd like to thank you for this wonderful program. Thank and you. may Allah accept your deed. I mean, you too. Yes, go ahead, Abu Khalid. Yes, I have a question, Abu Dhrahman. Please. I'm interested in reading some translations of the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. Would you advise me to a special book? In this? A, a translation of the glorious Quran? Yes, in English. Okay. Okay, in English. All right. Any other question, Abu Khalid? No, this is my question. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Barakallahu feek. All right. Saba or Siba, I think. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum as salam, brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. How are you, sister? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Brother, I'm so glad to see you on Hobat TV. We miss you. From Saudi TV. I know, I know, and I'm I'm sorry for that, but Alhamdulillah. That's okay, but we are so glad to see you back on Hoda TV. Alhamdulillah, uh, Rabbil Alameen. Okay, uh, Sheikh, I have, uh, uh, I want an advice from you that uh, 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 I have raised my children, mashallah, very Islamically, alhamdulillah, they go to an Islamic school, they, they study, uh, they, uh, they are doing, uh, my elder daughter is mashallah doing his, and uh, 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 they pray their salah, they wear their hijab, everything is mashallah good, but uh, now I'm noticing that when they are going to school, uh, other children are not as, uh, as Islamically, their families are not, and Surely that influence is affecting them. Me as a mother, uh, I, I didn't think from that angle that I would ever have to face. I thought I have, you know, done everything, family is doing everything right. The outside influences start affecting your child and I don't want them to, it's not, they haven't done anything wrong or they're not even going on the wrong side. But I'm so scared with looking at the environment around me. First I thought it was the worst, but now I'm looking that anywhere you go in the world, the atmosphere is the same. Yes. So I was wondering that you could you advise us as parents what we can do before it uh, starts, you know, getting bad or the children go in the wrong direction. Okay. How old are they, by the way? Okay. How old, uh, Sister Seba? Oh, my uh, my elder daughter is only eleven years old, and my younger daughter is eight years old. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum, and alaykum once again, Jazakallah khair. May Allah I mean, bless I mean, you. You too. Barakallahu fiki. Very good. Well. Uh, let me go back to this particular issue of the uh, argument with someone like your father, your mother, someone who feels they're older than you are, they're more knowledgeable than you are, and so on. What is the right approach? And of course, you need to 
give them some respect, show them some consideration. Don't just you know, think that you have some knowledge and you're better in Islam than they are. Of course, you keep a distance between you and them, and that will prevent them from listening to you, or in fact trying to get some help. But if you show them humbleness, if you try to show them that this is what I have, and of course with obviously confidence, it, don't be shaky, uh, be confident of what you say, but say it politely and nicely, and also uh, give reference to books, to scholars. I think the best thing for these people is to give them, say, this is a gift from me, and I'd like you to read it, fine, please, kindly, or uh, listen to this, or give them something in short, maybe a shorter book if they're not good readers, or they don't have the time, or show, you know, direct them to, to watch this, or see this, and so on and so forth. That would get gets them closer to where you want, rather than to get an argument. Don't get into uh, an argument because... Al-Jadal, or uh, this quarrel, is not going to get us anywhere. Dialogue, yes, is accepted, but monologue is not accepted. It's not going to get us anywhere. So my advice is that go ahead and, and uh, give, them, give this father and, and uh, what he, what he uh, is missing or try to correct some of the things like giving uh, uh, a book about the history of the collection of hadith and so on, that would help, inshallah, in this regard. But in the meantime, make dua. Make dua for your father to be on the right path in this regard. Finally, I think there's a very nice uh, situation there where Sister Fatima says that she used to be energetic and enthusiastic about dawah, but nowadays she feels like hmm, she's not really as strong as she used to be. What to do? Well, of course... These things do happen to people. You know, sometimes we, we all of us, get uh, somehow a weakness uh, or get, get some, uh, some weakness from time to time. What you need to do is try to uh, change, for example. If you used to do something, you know, go ahead and, and, and do something else. Maybe you're tired of, of doing this, but you need to get some, some knowledge, for example. Uh, take some courses, uh, learn new techniques of dawah, if you're interested in dawah, go in and be in the company of good da'is, those that are very close to you, I think that would, would help so much in this regard. That's, that's my, uh, my advice to you. So I would, I would recommend that you, uh, you do this and uh, make dua and check, check on yourself because maybe we did something wrong that is taken away taking us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not probably doing uh, the right thing, the right attitude in, in this regard. Maybe we did some, some sins that is actually affecting us. And of course, if we do this, uh, for example, as uh, Al-Imam al-Shafi'i was asked by someone, he says, well, what should, we, what should, I, um, what should I do in this regard? Uh, if, if I feel uh, weak or at times not really... Uh, very much interested or uh, I'm not really, I, I'm not as strong in my iman. He said, uh, uh, for example, I'm not really memorizing the Quran and the Hadith. He said, شَكَوْتُ إِلَىٰ وَكِيعٍ سُوءَ حِفْظِي فَأَرْشَدَنِي إِلَىٰ تَرْكِ الْمَعَاصِي وَأَخْبَرَنِي بِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورٌ وَنُورُ اللَّهِ لَا يُهْدَى لِعَاصِي وَأَخْبَرَنِي بِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورٌ so I, I uh, complained to uh, Wakia, uh, you know, uh, I have a bad memory and what should I do? Uh, he said, uh, avoid uh, having sins because sins, uh, because the obedience of Allah is, is uh, in fact, uh, is uh, a light and uh, Allah's light is not given or knowledge. Uh, is not given to uh, uh, to anyone who's uh, who's disobedient, who has uh, who has sinned. So, in that in that regard, I think thank you so much, sister, for all the uh, the things that uh, you have said. And let me go back to, in fact, some of the questions here. This is, um, uh, and I'm taking this, inshallah, trying to answer the calls as well. But I do have this interesting. A question from uh, 
this is uh, w- within a name. He said, I'm so proud that Saudi Arabia is the only country in the world with a total sharia and, and congratulate King Abdullah, the custodian of the two holy mosques, uh, who has the honor to lead this great nation. And he said, I believe it will be a great sin on anyone to hold protests. Is my thinking correct? If correct, then there could be a fatwa prohibiting such protests. May Allah give you all long life and pursue the good work. Well, thank you so much for raising this issue because this issue is really timely. And we know that, yes, nowadays, as we we see, particularly in the Arab world, uh, many events are taking place and and many, um, in fact, people, masses of people, go out in the streets to protest and to seek uh, some reform. They, they'd like to, to get some of the uh, uh, things that they are seeking, political reform, social reform, economic reform. In fact, some of them are really tired of the uh, rule uh, or the government that has ruled them for so many years and they would say we need it's time for change we need a new uh, leadership and so on and so forth of course this is what is happening in 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 some countries around around us but in this case as you said in the case of saudi arabia obviously let's go back to the rule in this regard and what ahl sunnah wal jamaa are saying in this regard they say that the, the Muslim ruler has a right upon us. As long as this Muslim ruler is ruling us with Islam and is not asking us to do some disbelief, as the Prophet ﷺ says, فَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّمْعُ وَالطَّاعَ إِلَّا أَن تَرَوْ كُفْرًا بَوَاحًا You have to have to listen and to obey unless you see a clear disbelief, some pure disbelief, such as when, when a, a, a ruler closes the masjid and say, there, it says there is no, no salah anymore, or abandon something that is so clear-cut in Islam, obviously in that case we need to see what to do. And also look at uh, when we have this trouble, or try, when we, we get all these difficulties and challenges and, and confrontations between the ruler uh, and the ruled, and what would, would take place in this regard. Obviously, that has created a lot of uh, difficulties, and, and in fact, many lives have been lost, uh, many people have been injured. In fact, today we have seen uh, terrible uh, pictures coming out of uh, Yemen, for example. It was I was very much affected by what I saw, uh, today in Yemen and this killings and the injuries that have taken place and also throughout the days because of this confrontation. So what the scholars of Islam say in this regard is, is that you need to consider uh, obviously the results of doing this. Now if we have a rule that is peaceful and helping the nation, obviously you would think that uh, why do I need to change when of course going out in the streets, and normally they say these are peaceful demonstrations only to show that we are seeking uh, reform, but obviously the masses don't have the mentality of uh, reason. Normally what they do when they go out, they try to express themselves in a, in a violent way, as, as we have seen in in many countries, and then confrontations uh, start, and then changing from uh, peaceful demonstrations into violent demonstrations and, and, and confrontations, and of course killings, and, and of course that creates havoc and disorder and chaos in the country, as we have seen in many countries. In fact, we've seen this in non-Muslim countries as well, in Thailand, and, and of course with little effect. Uh, countries are not alike. And of course, what we, uh, as in the, in the meantime, what the scholars of Islam do is that they advise Muslim rules to be fair, to rule with justice, to, to respond to the needs of their own nations. Now, when this comes to Saudi Arabia in particular, I think that's, that's your question, brother, is 
Of course, we need to be very, very straightforward in this regard and say that we have peaceful situation nowadays and we live, as you can see, um, in this cohesion and very strong uh, connection with the leadership between the people and the leadership. In fact, uh, yes, the uh, last Friday, March 11, when there was some call for demonstrations, no one actually turned to the, um, to the streets uh, in, in many cities around Saudi Arabia because of this reason, because they feel, why should I do this when I'm uh, in, in living in safety, in comfort, I'm, uh, uh, you know, uh, having security, and I leave my children alone, and uh, they can go and, and continue their education. The opportunities are open for us. Um, we have an Islamic atmosphere and ruling with Sharia, as you, as you indicated. All of this would give us a, a true meaning of how a Muslim country lives. This is very, very important, and that's why the scholars of Islam, the uh, commission of senior scholars in this country, in Saudi Arabia, have issued that um, uh, statement pointing out to the prohibition of all these demonstrations because they lead into chaos and disorder and the results are so terrible and we should uh, always have advice between us and our rulers and that's what happened. I will have more because my director, Ahmed Atif, is asking me to break. I need to go for a break, but I'll be back with more on this particular issue. So please, stay around. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Oh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his mercy, for his messengership, for the revelation to be revealed. This is not for the human beings to make that decision. If a person would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, truthfully, asking for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive. We have as Muslims a duty, and that is to recite the book of Allah, to ponder over the verses, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to act according to the Qur'an. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, but it who would this mercy will be for. And the Prophet sallallahu was sent to all mankind. So the ummah or the people of the Prophet sallallahu are all mankind since the time of the Prophet sallallahu till the day of judgment. Why waste our life without getting to know every verse in the Qur'an, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? So this is something that you have to point out to the to them in the Bible. Something which is, I think, very badly needed by the youth, which is uh, staying firm on the truth. This is just one of the greatest examples for me of how to control your anger. Within the framework of, of being the cleanest religion, the cleanest jurisprudence, and in the meantime, uh, uh, the kindest religion to animals. Watch Let's Talk with Khalil Amunet as he interviews guests and discusses a variety of topics, everything from youth issues to religious issues. Join us here on Hoda TV. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Obviously continuing with the question of um, demonstrations and protests in the streets and uh, we already talked about the statement issued by the senior scholars in Saudi Arabia in this regard and of course I know it some people would argue that uh, it would be different from one country to another based on the situation 
But in general, this is the general rule regarding the Islamic rulers and how they govern, and of course, we uh, uh, confirm and affirm the importance of judging with justice among the ruled, and, and of course, that would uh, uh, lift any uh, call for reform, any, uh, to meet any, any demand for all this change and so on and so forth. And of course, this, uh, when we have this strong relationship and the importance of being on good terms between the ruler and the ruled, as the Prophet ﷺ says, خَيْرُ أُمَرَائِكُمْ أَلَّذِينَ تُحِبُّونَهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَكُمْ وَتُصَلُّونَ لَهُمْ وَيُصَلُّونَ لَكُمْ The best of your uh, uh, emirs or people in authority uh, who rule you would be the ones who love you and you love them. And they, you pray for them and they pray for you, meaning you make dua for them, they make dua for you. And that, when I looked at what is happening nowadays in Saudi Arabia, today, for example, uh, the king uh, made a, a statement, the custodian of the two holy mosques, and that statement uh, really reflected his own feelings towards his own people and what he said, look, we are... Uh, happy that we are all together and we have this firm relationship you, you've you proven your solidarity uh, as a nation with uh, uh, all of us together in this and at the end he said uh, I thank the scholars who actually stood and, and, and issued their statement because that has actually helped in protecting and securing our country being all together in this, and at the end, he said, please pray for me. That's one thing of how this solidarity and uh, strong relationship and affection between the leader and his own nation. Not only that, but he issued so many decrees regarding, or world decrees in fact, regarding the improvement of the uh, living standards in, in this country, also giving the scholars more prominence uh, helping people to find, uh, in fact, to build houses. Uh, I think the news is, is widespread. Many Saudis, in fact, all of the Saudis are very happy today. They consider this a, a turning point or a historical day for them because of what took place of all these royal decrees that helped them improve uh, their own situation. Uh, all the government employees, for example, have been given two uh, uh, salaries uh, as an addition, as a bonus for for every employee, and also not only that, and also for university students, not only that, but also in the meantime, when we talk about the new decrees regarding the uh, renovation of masjids uh, in in the country, about five hundred uh, million rials for that, also helping the commission for enjoining. Uh, good and forbidding evil, Hayatul Amr Maruf and Nahi Al Munkar. Also, those uh, uh, offices for uh, community and um, uh, for, for dawa, community dawa, and uh, also uh, expatriates uh, uh, called to Islam. And all of these efforts, but also in the meantime, all of the uh, uh, scholars and, 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 and help and respect that we find in, this, in these decrees show us the strength. And that's why there is really, in reality, no need to, to do this. And always people pray for, for, for their own leaders if they would follow that, that path. And I think that's, that's an example to follow. And, and I would agree with you, of course, uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, Qurashi for what you what you wrote in this regard it is really very very important to uh, to consider and and to see how things are are, are being here I don't want to sound like I'm I'm really uh, here to 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 think uh, that we are praising or trying to uh, you know give something uh, out of uh, our own but rather I'm just reflecting on what is what is being uh, given and how, how this is uh, being received by uh, the people in Saudi Arabia. The, this, there's this question of Abu Khalid regarding the translation of the glorious Quran. Well, 
There have been many translations, and in fact, there are problems with some of the translations that are available, and therefore, you need to go back to an authentic uh, source, and I would find that still, even with the, with the current translations, there will be uh, some difficulties to, to, um, to find the best among all of them, but so far, the best to me has been two efforts, the one that was a translation by Yusuf Ali Rahimahullah, who translated uh, the Glorious Quran early on, and it was printed many times, but at the end, the, this copy of the translation by uh, Yusuf Ali Rahimahullah actually was, was adopted by King Fahd uh, Complex for printing the Glorious Quran. It was given to a group of uh, reviewers and, and scholars, and they reviewed it, and they made some adjustment to it, and they um, some some revision, and finally at the end they issued that uh, you know uh, statement in in this and they issued that final uh, uh, revision. Uh, so I, I I feel this is uh, so far the best that is available. Of course, what we're doing we're not translating the glorious Quran as such. We are translating the meaning of the glorious Quran as people understood it. Of course, you need not only. You're, you're translating verbatim, of course that would be uh, uh, not possible to do word for word, letter for letter. This is not the idea. The idea is to bring the meaning, but the meaning has to be based on the interpretation, on the tafsir. And now that tafsir, you need to depend on some strong tafsir, and of course tafsirs are available, and they would be some differences here and there. The point is, Alhamdulillah, so far we do have that. We have also another try by Sahih International who are trying to, uh, they did some, some good work and I think they're now issuing another copy. They, they feel it's, it's a, a new revision, a more uh, uh, scrutinized work of the translation of the meaning of the glorious Quran. I think that, that is an, an, it is a, uh, going to uh, be put in, um, in, uh, in use uh, as a publication very soon. So I think that would be, that would be nice to have. All right. Now, uh, Siba from Canada, uh, an advice to your family? Well, mashallah. You know, first, uh, I'm so thankful to all the good words that you're, you, you said. And also to the effort for you as a mother to take care of your children, especially when you live in a non-Muslim environment uh, such as yours. And of course, in this regard, what we need to do is always... Um, be uh, friends with our own children. Try to raise them with confidence. And of course, you need to uh, deal with their own situation. It's not only just protectionism or to keep them away, but rather you need to arm them with knowledge of Islam. You need to show them the right path and, and uh, based on the dalil or evidence from the glorious Quran and the Sunnah. This is important because when they are left alone, when they go on their own, they still practice Islam as it should be. And, and, and that's, that's important. You know, mashallah, for 11 and 8 years old, they're still grown up, but they're still with you. You need to uh, use the, uh, these uh, few years that you have for them before they go on their own so they would be really keeping on the straight path with discussion, with, uh, you know, showing, showing them the right attitude and, of course, being friends with them to let them tell you about what they face and the kind of challenges and the kind of thinking they have. I think that would, would bring, you know, uh, the bridge. You'd, you'd close the bridge between you and them and that would make uh, life better. Uh, this is, okay, well... Um, I think we need to stop here because I have a question from Fahmi and a question from uh, Ikramuddin Muhammad. Um, and I'm sorry that um, um, I'm sorry I cannot I cannot uh, really go into uh, so much uh, details into that. But I'll keep that inshallah for the coming episode. Uh, next Friday by the grace of Allah inshallah and I'm sorry I don't have the time for that until we meet inshallah I leave you with Allah's care and protection and I ask him to keep us all on the straight path when we meet him when he's so pleased with us until then assalamu alaikum 
ورحمة الله وبركاته I heard it through a brother that you Oh my brother you are going through times of difficulty I know sometimes you feel all alone Call me anytime when you feel all the way down oh, 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 oh. Trials and temptations lie at every corner we turn It's a test from Allah to see if we succeed or not My brother, it's a trial that you're going through So don't be afraid, Allah's there for you So hold on, Allah's there for you Hold on, He's listening to you Hold on